All right, so I got a somewhat unconventional video for you today. Um, if you've been around on the channel long, you know that I do a lot of 10% ballistics gelatin tests. Um, on this specific batch, I don't know if you can see the BB there. So, <laughs> first of all, I've been experimenting uh, with my batches. I've been getting them right within calibration. I've always noticed there's a difference on my first batch than the second. I've been working on that. Uh, potentially my methods, the... Uh, temperature of the water uh, but my first batch is always a little off and then after the remelt then it settles down um, i tried something a little different this time for this first batch and uh, it definitely had a lot different uh, result so uh, eventually i don't know if you can see how clear this is because usually people when they make up this uh, nox gelatin here it's pretty cloudy and mine are always really clear uh, but trying this new method for the first batch here uh, before the first remelt uh, we're coming in at only two inches of penetration to be 10 percent calibration you're supposed to be between 2.95 and 3.75 inches of penetration with the bb test uh, but now that i made the change to this uh, i'm coming in at two inches there so this is actually very close to 20 percent ballistics gelatin um, it's hard to find information on proper calibration for 20 percent um, but from what i found and can tell it's about 1.8 1.8 inches of penetration uh, for 20 percent ballistics gelatin so coming in there right at two inches uh, dead even that's very close to 20 percent ballistics gelatin so i didn't know that i had effectively made 20 percent ballistic gelatin on mistake um so i didn't have time to remelt this and add more water and get it within 10 percent calibration so i didn't want to waste the day uh because i'd already intended to bring it out here today so we're going to do a little experimentation with it so this is much firmer i can tell by touching it it is much much firmer than what i usually run so um i'm going to see if I got two of these and they are temperature controlled as always um, I'm gonna shoot full metal jacket 389 40 and 45 uh, with another one backed up there and see if we can catch any in this 20% because usually in 10% uh, they just sail right through uh, even when I was using the clear blocks that are 16 inches long oftentimes well I, most times if uh, hollow point did not expand or you shot a full metal jacket into it it would go clear through both of those blocks as well so with this one being so much firmer by mistake, um, we're going to shoot FMJ into two of them lined up and see if we get any stoppages. These are about 11 and a half, 12 inches long, so we're looking at about 23, 24 inches overall length. And one last note before we get started here, um, again, you can see how clear that is, and that's with this being pretty much 20%. Uh, a lot of people ask me how I make my gel how I get it so clear. I'm still perfecting the process and the recipe and all that for my batch sizes. Uh, but once I get that down to a T, I uh, will definitely be releasing a video eventually uh, how I make these and how I get them so clear. So anyways, let's get started. Hit one of those off to the side there. I'm trying to make make sure I have room for everything. Oh, I stayed in, so that was good. Oh, cool, there they are, both shots. Oh yeah. Now those are flat nose, I believe. Yep, and 380, so mm, I don't know. The other calibers might pass through, but there's only one way to find out. Oh, oh, <laughs> all right, what's going on here? Uh, oh, there's a nine. So this one came out the top. That Man, that must have tumbled. That's a huge wound cavity there. It's got to be from uh, tumbling. So that one, it seems like I'm shooting from a slightly upward angle, crouched down back there to hit these. That one came out the top there, but thankfully we got this one. 
surprisingly, less penetration than the 380. Even though it's a round nose, and it's heavier, and it's going faster. So that has to do something with the uh, energy dump and or looks like it might have tumbled there or at least yawed so that drugs some of the velocity and thus penetration out of it in doing so. It might have been because it there's my first shot there's my second with the 40 and they both went right through okay and those are flat nose as well and both of them zip, uh, they just zipped right through you can see uh, wound cavity is pretty big there but uniform so there was no yawing there. Uh, they just stayed straight. I believe the same thing here on this higher one there. Uh, so I think that's why the 9mm stopped as I said. Because the bullet yawed. Dumped a lot of energy. Slowed down from going like this. Before it righted itself to end up like that. That's why you had that massive cavity we saw earlier on both of those. Whereas that particular 40 round with the flat nose uh, did not do that. Nor did the 380. Obviously, 380 is a lot less powerful, uh, but those 40s just went right through. So let's try some 45 uh, ball ammo now. I'm not quite sure if that back block turned after the first or second shot. I didn't notice it till the end. What do we got going on here? Those are my two entries there. Yeah, you can see the uh, wound channel from those flat nose 40s. A lot bigger than that round nose on that 45. And then let's see here. Wow, really? Okay, so one of them yawed and then went out the top there. But my first uh, lower shot, wow, it did the same thing here. Because you can see how that channel gets so big bounced off the table and then still exited the block so it looks like uh, 45 would have exited the block regardless so this has piqued my interest um, I didn't really plan on running any hollow points um, but now I really want to and I I think I have some uh, I know I have some of at least some of those calibers up there uh, from the carry mags that were in them but uh, we'll see what I got up there and we'll put some hollow points in here hopefully for each caliber it depends on what I got up there at the other table I know you guys were probably yelling at me to tell you, show you what I used. So this was the 40, just your standard federal 165 grain flat nose, like I said. The 45 was your standard Winchester 230 grain round nose. Ah, my hand stuck. <laughs> Ball, whatever you would call it there. Uh, 380 Winchester here, white box, flat nose. 95 yeah 95 green and the nine millimeter blazer brass 115 grain around those there uh, but for the nine millimeter i have uh, some variation of the gold dots here i believe they're 124 grain standard pressure not a hundred percent sure on that though let's see what else do i got up here uh, da, 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 in the stick mag for my 40 I believe that i had some oh, yep gold dots uh, i think these were 180 grain standard pressure uh, for the 380 i have these were underwood plus p with the 90 grain xtp bullet i want to say and 45 hmm if i brought my mag for that i don't know i think i left the 45 at home with the hollow points in the mag so we can do these three unfortunately can't do 45.
All right, I was gonna do them all in a row, but I can see we're gonna get a little congested here. So there's the 380. <laughs> there's from, man, this thing won't focus. Why won't, there we go. From the side, from the top, pretty short penetration as expected and 20%. We'll get the other two in here and I'll get some measurements and this thing is still not wanting to focus. What the heck? All right, uh, well, I didn't mean to get that close. First shot was right here. Second was there. I meant to get it more over here over these 380s. But that was still pretty much what the single cavity looked like when I came up here and had to move it. There's both of those. Holy shell hit my head. All right, well, I pulled that second shot there, so that one, uh, yeah, went out the side. You can see it's, it's practically identical cavity, though. And there's our bullet. Man, that thing's massive. So no doubt this one did exactly the same. You can see just by looking at the cavities, they're practically identical. So if I hadn't pulled that shot... And it just barely came out because it would have been sitting right there next to the other one. All right, so penetration then on this roughly 20% ballistics gelatin. A 9 millimeter went about 17 and a quarter there. But if you count that bounce back that it got, you're at 18. And then this 380s, one of them sitting about 18 and a half. The other one right about 19. Um, and remember the, the 40s and the 45 full metal jackets, they just passed right through. So we don't have a measurement on those. So, on the hollow point side of things here, both those 380 there, sitting about 7.5 roughly, uh, or 9 millimeter. We got one here at 10.5, and, and then one just shy of 10, it looks like. And then the 40 that we captured, just shy of 9 inches there, it looks like. So, if you've seen very many uh, ballistics gel tests with handguns and 10% uh, gelatin, this is a vastly different result because most of these would all be in this block and uh, you can see that none of these are meeting the uh, fbi minimum penetration of 12 inches there uh, but they use 10 percent ballistic gelatin so you get a lot further penetration i've always kind of been curious so it's kind of cool that i accidentally uh messed this batch up and it ended up being about 20 percent because i always wondered about this so and then yeah like i said even these 9 mil and 380 fmjs uh, through 10%, they would have passed right through both, no problem. So these are the recovered 380, 9mm, uh, and that 140. As you can see, the full metal jacket ones are not deformed in any way. There's the 90 grain XTP by Underwood, I believe it was, plus P, if I remember correctly. Uh, gold dot, 9mm, 124 grain standard pressure, if I remember correctly. And then gold dot, 180 grain, standard pressure, 40 Smith & Wesson, if I remember correctly. And this thing is just massive. I mean, look at that. We got about 0 .470 on these 380s. Uh, 0 .650 on the 9mm. And this 40 is coming here at nearly 0 .810, 0 .807 there. 80 caliber anyways that's it like i said i want to take advantage of this uh oversight here and experimentation and ended up with practically 20 percent ballistics gelatin and instead of remelting it just go ahead and try it see what happens so i'm actually really glad i did this was very interesting for me at least hope you guys liked it as well um i'll have individual tests coming up of this ammo and much more i've been doing gel tests for years now and continuing to do so so um, these were in a large 380 collaboration video I did. These were in a large 9mm collaboration video I did. It's, uh, they were most powerful 380 ammo you can buy, most powerful 9mm ammo you can buy. Uh, these were just a baseline in that video. These were one of the contenders in that video. This, I don't 
Uh, no, I've never had these on video, I don't believe. But I don't have individual tests on these instead of a giant collaboration video them being thrown in there. I'm going back through everything I did in those videos, plus all the new stuff I got. And I'm going to be doing individual videos of them uh, to get better parameters on them and, and data. So we'll be using 10% ballistics gelatin. Uh, as I intended to uh, so you'll be able to see all those and more upcoming in 10% uh, By the way, if you happen to see that off to the side of the video uh, I'll put a link in the description for that You can check that out if you're interested in that and uh, everything else that company offers as well Hey guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it as always. And I hope to see you on the next one